The Notebook normalized marriage being hard. This man is probably what made her sick. I say it all the time on here, y'all. It doesn't have to be an abusive man to make you sick. I just wanna, let, just bear with me, y'all. When describing their relationship, when he's reading to her in the memory care center, he's like, well, we didn't have anything in common. We didn't really agree on anything. And basically all we did was fight, but we just couldn't keep our hands off each other. Cool, so physical chemistry, maybe butterflies. Remember, I warned y'all about butterflies. The excitement, that's all these people have in common. That's why I'm like, I don't get why th this is a love story. Okay, he gives her new experiences. Let me help you drive this old timey car. Also, be very aware of men who try to teach you things. Big red flag. I'm gonna teach you how to drive a car. I'm gonna teach you to face your fear of laying in the middle of the road at night and wait for a car to come and hit you. And I'm also gonna teach you how to ignore your instinct to stay alive. And more importantly, to ignore you, tell you, teach you how to not trust yourself. In this scene, he's literally like, you need to like learn how to trust other people. And she's like, this seems kind of crazy. And he's like, sit like, ha! He also teaches her how to face her fear of going off a rope swing, which I actually appreciate that one. But like, that's not enough, dude. I actually appreciate that he introduced her to someone other than super rich white Southerners with the, the, the talk like this, old money in the South. You know, those old people who talk like this. Bought people, owned people. Like we know that she comes from a long line of terrible people. And this scene is giving Titanic vibes. But Jack was a good influence on Rose. This man is toxic. Jack didn't have money. Jack was like a free thinker. He was, he saw people's humanity. He was like, we, we know why we like Jack, right? Noah, I don't know why I'm supposed to like Noah other than the fact that he's the underdog. He's, you know, hot as hell. And that's it. He's obsessed with her, but that doesn't make me like him. As a white woman raised in the South, I think Noah took advantage of her hatred of her mom and her mom being so controlling and the friction between them. He exploited that that rift between her her and her parents. So in this whole scene, he's like, you know what? It's, tell me what it's really about. It's not about him. It's not about that super hot man that adores you and would do anything for you. It's because you want security. Yeah, bro, she wants security. Like, emotional security. Not this, yeah, that it is dating you. He's like, it's about the money. That's why you want to be with him. It's all about the money. And she's pissed. She's like, I hate you. You're an arrogant prick. And this is the scene that really pisses me off. He's like, why'd you come here? I mean, it couldn't have been, you know, I don't know. Maybe she feels a little guilty that her mom didn't tell her about all those letters. And then he built her a house. And then he took her rowing with ducks and, and you know, all this stuff, right? And he has the audacity to be like, you wouldn't be here if there wasn't something missing in your relationship. You're bored. He keeps saying you're bored. And she's like, what? No, shut up. And then she's like, to do what? If we get back together, look, we're already fighting. Like, this sucks. We're already fighting. And we literally just had like the two best things ever. Like, and he's like, that's what we do. We fight. That's what we do. And he's like, basically being like, that's what love is. Like, you call me on my stuff and I tell you that you're a burp. And it doesn't hurt your feelings because you just like, you know, you get over it. Look at this. Because you rebounded two seconds. Basically, he's calling her crazy. He's calling her a drama queen. And he's calling her a pain in the butt. And then he's like, but you know what? You're a coward. You want to do the easy thing. The easy way out. And she's like, um, hello, you're asking me to leave my fiance who's hot as hell and adores me and gives me the freedom to do whatever I want. The only reason why I'm actually miserable in that relationship is because I'm in, I'm too attached to approve, like making my mommy happy and my daddy. That's the problem. She has lost herself in her relationship with this beautiful man, not because of him, but because of her. Because she wants to please her parents. And because she is so attached to her mom's approval. And honestly, this is so relatable. White mothers, especially white Southern mothers, I don't know about other white mothers, but in the United States, white mothers, most of the ones that I know, put so much pressure on their daughters to stay in line, which is one reason why everything's a mess, because white women will not ever 
say mmm to the king babies. White men, right? We'll screw over everyone, including our daughters, because of we cannot ever stand up to king baby. Now this man doesn't seem like a king baby. He like seems like he really just adores her. He actually puts up with a lot of crap from her. And the only reason why she's not painting, it's not because of him. It's because of her. She has let go. She has stopped centering who she is. She doesn't need Noah for that. Honestly, I bet she probably doesn't paint anymore when she's with Noah because that dude is such a drama queen. He's probably stirring up stuff all the time. She would have got a lot more painting done with him. She just needed to realize that she wasn't painting anymore because she's still attached to the money and a, a, making her mommy happy and all that stuff. But I believe this dude would have let her be who she wants to be because he's crazy about her. I mean, even when she wanted to go away and think about being engaged to him, he was like, should I be nervous? She's like, nah, nah, nah. He's like, okay, go do what you need to do. I know you have cold feet, it's okay. Like, I mean, first of all, I kind of find that hard to believe, honestly, especially back in the day, but whatever, okay. And then when she comes back and tells him, that she cheated on him. He's like, well, I could try to beat him up. I could, you know, leave you or whatever. And he's like, but I just, honestly, I just love you. I just want to be with you. But I don't want to have to convince my fiance to marry me, which is a very valid point. He's all like, I meant what I said when I gave you the ring. She's like, I love. And she's like, when I'm with you, I feel like one person. And with him, I feel like another person. Yeah, you know who you feel like when you're with Noah? Crazy! Because Noah is exciting. He's the bad boy. He's the man who gives you butterflies. The man who really loves you and ad just adores you feels boring. It's not boring, but it feels boring compared to the emotional roller coaster that someone like Noah will put you on. And so back to this argument, he's like, look, you basically you're a coward. You're taking the easy way out. The easy way is to go with a man who adores you and isn't a drama queen. If you want to be brave and have real love, you'll have struggle love. It's gonna be really hard. It's not gonna be easy. And we're gonna have to work at it every day. Who wants that? Seriously, y'all. This movie normalized insecure, toxic men who don't even see us, but know they need us. And who want whatever it is that we offer them. In her case, it is status. She's rich. And, and think about what this did to his ego. He is a poor boy. And he got this rich white girl to give up her family. Because you know the family's not talking to her anymore. Especially mama. To give up this unbelievably hot, successful dude who adores her. She gave all of that up. And moved out to like BFE to live with this dude. And do what? Paint? And fight? No thank you. You know, I've talked about this before. Marriage is not hard. Life is hard. Relationships can, can, can be challenging at times, but if you are in, in, a, in a relationship with a man and you are a woman who was raised under patriarchy and living under patriarchy, which if you're not, I don't know where you are. Marriage to men, <laughs> cishet men, is only hard if they gaslight you all the time. If they make your life unnecessarily dramatic and filled with fights and they exhaust you and they fry your nervous system. And if they're doing this right out of the gate, literally asking you out by hanging off of a Ferris wheel with one hand and literally threatening side to to manipulate you into going out with them after you said no and you're actually on a date already. This is how they start off. This is how it ends. You dying of a chronic illness because the toxicity of, a, of an insecure man who hasn't dealt with whatever it is that's making him so nuts, who doesn't have a life outside of you and uses you to make himself feel good about himself. This is how it ends. You dying of a disease and him not even thinking, maybe I should leave her in peace. Maybe I should not get what I want. And instead of, even though she wrote the book, I don't care. Why put her through this every day? Just so you can see her again for a few minutes? Fork off. Take the easy way out, y'all. Stop dating dramatic, insecure men who kill you slowly.